Good evening, Stats fans, and welcome back to Stat Center, presented by the Michelson 20MM Foundation. I, of course, am Robert Adut from yaymath.org. Tonight, we plot. Not a coup, not an outline for a suspense thriller, but data. Lots and lots and lots and lots of data. You might have guessed that there are different methods out there for analyzing data. Graphic displays are extremely useful because they allow us to visualize data, seeing patterns we might have missed in long lists of numbers. With me for further insight is an athlete who is no stranger to the world of statistical or brotherly competition, Denver Broncos frontman quarterback Peyton Manning. Peyton. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us. My pleasure, Robert. Uh, I gotta be quick, though. Can't keep the nationwide people waiting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, jumping right in then. Peyton, why don't you help our viewers at home with some data plotting, if you can, starting by making sense of this chart displaying touchdown numbers by five of the top quarterbacks between the years 2011 and 2014 you're definitely going to want to plot the data on a graph to get a clear visual sense of what's going on here. Much better. Just doesn't seem right, but by using this line graph, we can see Philip Rivers is the most consistent of this bunch, while the rest of us just seem to struggle with some pretty drastic highs and lows. Now, in my defense, I can't help that I had a record-breaking year in 2013, or that I was injured in 2011. And Eli, poor Eli, the kid just had a tough year in 2013. We've talked about it with Daddy Archie. I don't know. Maybe my success was just getting to him. But 80 interceptions? Little brother crisis. <laughs> you know how it is. Now, we've already discussed the difference between qualitative and quantitative data. To refresh with qualitative data, we're asking ourselves, can the data be arranged into categories, like a playing position or the college the person attended? And with quantitative data, we're asking, are the data numerical, like touchdowns or interceptions? Peyton, start us off with qualitative data. We surveyed a group of people about their favorite football team. How should we display this thing? I'm a plain and simple guy, Robert, so I'd have to go with the bar chart because it's plain and simple. Bar charts show us all the possible categories, as well as the number of people, also called the frequency, in each category. Here we see the number of people who answered Raiders, Dolphins, Broncos, and Eli's Giants. Poor Eli. If you wanted to see portions of a whole, though, you might want to use a pie chart. I also really like pie. Omaha, okay. this chart uses the same data as our bar chart, but it allows us to see what proportion of those surveyed are fans of each team. Now, doesn't that just look delicious? And uh, quantitative data? Check out this histogram showing the total number of touchdowns thrown by every NFL quarterback in a recent season. Notice there isn't a set width for each group, so it's up to us to determine what the width should be there's nothing wrong with expanding or shrinking the widths to make it easier to get a grip on the trends in the data. We can also use a box plot to express numerical data. Now, the middle line in the box plot represents the median of the data, while the lines on the edges represent the first and third quartiles, respectively. The first quartile is the middlemost point of the first half of data. The third quartile is the middlemost point of the second half of data. Having these values is useful because they allow us to see the middle of the data as well as the spread. Hey, Ben, what the hell are you doing? The director's looking for you. Oh, uh, that's me. Gotta go sell some auto insurance. <laughs> oh, why is that so hard to remember? Damn it, Eli. <laughs> I bet you could sing it, too. I bet you could do everything better than me, Eli. Okay, thanks for fitting us in between commercial shoots, I guess, Peyton. Omaha. The good news is that box plots can help us see things like overall trends in NFL scoring, giving us the ability to analyze with great accuracy while keeping an eye out for anomalies that would otherwise go unseen 
within mountains of data. That'll do it for this edition of Stat Center. Keep it one standard deviation ahead of the curve, stats fans. And be good to your younger siblings. Mm-hmm.